over here! Hello everyone, the Green Scorpion here. Along with Ignis Animations. And today, we got a little treat for you. So, I've been playing Fire Emblem Heroes for a while, and many of you know that I'm a Fire Emblem nut. Amber certainly knows that. And, on the other hand, she really isn't interested in Fire Emblem at all, but one thing she is interested in is art. You've likely seen her work already, I mean, she's my thumbnail artist for Pete's sake. This does make her the perfect partner, though, to take a look at some of the best art pieces in Fire Emblem Heroes. Specifically, the top 15 best Fire Emblem Heroes arts. Why 15? Because we couldn't narrow it down to 10, if we went up to 20, we'd be pretty much just adding more and more, like, for god knows how long, because there are so many good arts in Fire Emblem. Like, how many did we go through? Like, 30? Yeah, that sounds about right. Mm-hmm. So, what we did was handpick 15 arts from the game that we feel are the best of the best, and she's gonna talk about it from a more artistic and aesthetic standpoint, while I talk about why it works within the Fire Emblem context as a whole. And just a couple rules. So, we're going to be mainly looking at their base art, uh, the one that where they're just standing, you know what I mean? And we will throw some bonus points in if for any cool details about their attack or damage arts or what have you. Additionally, only one per character. Also, this is a bit unscripted, so if you hear a bunch of, uh, a bunch of uhs, mms, and stuttering from us, that's why. But with that said, ready babe? Absolutely! Alright, here we go. The top 15 best Fire Emblem Heroes arts, starting with number 15, Brave Erica. So, basically this is a reference to uh, her brother Ephraim from Sacred Stones. They, like, the audience of Fire Emblem Heroes basically voted on who they wanted to get, like, really, really cool, sick designs. And Erica won one of them, and she looks amazing, frankly. Like, I fell in love with her as soon as I saw her. I absolutely love her design. It's very striking, what, what with the orange and the, tr and the pale turquoise. It's absolutely beautiful. You got a nice line of action. You got the, the nice framing of the figure with the cape. It's just very well done. Absolutely. And uh, it's kind of funny, too, because when people first saw this, a lot of people compared her to Lynn because of the ponytail, which... I, I will admit is a little bit like, you know, insulting to her, but also very, very true because like Lynn is kind of associated. I'm surprised that not a lot of ponytails are showcased in Fire Emblem, like, um, and if they are, people just immediately think of Lynn. That being said, babe, would you cosplay this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like, I think the only thing you'd have to do is, like, maybe get a big long wig, but this, I think this would look fantastic on you, quite frankly. So anyway, moving on to number 14, we have King Kenegus. Really, they just took his design from Path of Radiance and just refined it, and they did a really good job in my opinion. Yeah, his overall design is very regal and it's very and it's just very like demanding and powerful. Um you have just like the the wonderful detailing on his on his jewelry, you have his you have his cape. Just, you, you get a good stance of power with him. Mm hmm I also kind of, like, find it interesting. Like, I kind of noticed this just now, but the shadowing on his arm, you can see his muscles bulging from the robes of all things, which is really, really cool. Bonus points for his attack and damaged arts that manage to make him look really, really savage, particularly his critical art. So, um, quick little thing, by the way. So, uh, we're setting up a Fire Emblem campaign, and Amber's got a character named Honey, who is also a Laguz, uh, Wolf Laguz, actually. So, but uh, that being said, would she be proud to serve serve a guy like this? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, would she challenge him ever? She probably would, but she probably wouldn't win. Oh, she would never <laughs> win. Like, absolutely, she would never win. I'm sorry. Kenegus is kind of a bamf. But moving on to number thirteen, we have Fallen Ike, and this one is actually my personal favorite art in the game and it's kind of saddens me that we only have to put it at number 13 but i'm glad we get to talk about it at all um just gonna say this is gonna start a trend of the fallen arts in this game because the fallen arts are really freaking good this one especially is really nice to me because i really like the use of shadow and like the cross hatching on the pants mm -hmm. um along with just like all the purple swirls just a really nice nice image absolutely and I, I what really gets me is the facial expression like there is that obvious struggling to maintain control, but you can tell he's about to lose it at any point. Like, absolutely. And, yeah. Why isn't this any higher? Uh, the silhouette mainly gets lost a little bit, but... Th that's that is true. I will grant you that. Okay, so yeah, that, that does make sense. Moving on to number 12 now, we got Bramimond, a mysterious hero from, uh, from Blazing Sword. 
and yeah they really captured that with this what with the hood the like energy streaks going around him really really cool in this one the design at its core is very simple but it's actually made very spectacular by the use of detail you got the very sh you got the streaks of of magic all around coupled with like the the wave of his cloak mm -hmm. all drawn up to his face which kind of end which kind of just ends there but it's also really just it's, it's unique. It's unique. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. I like the fact that his robe is waving around like there's actually wind affecting him, and that just adds to, like, adds to the striking silhouette, like, accompanied by the energy smears, which is really, really cool. So, uh, fun fact about this guy. How would you react if he started speaking to you in your own voice? That would be a little weird. Yeah, well, that's, that's what this guy does. Um, he kind of, like... He's kind of a character that doesn't really have a mind... Well, he does have a mind of his own, but he, like, embodies the person that he's speaking to. So that's why, like, he has four different voice actors in the actual game, which I thought was a really, really cool detail. All right, moving on to the next one, we have number 11, Ashura. So, the Goddess of Radiant Dawn. It's a Kenega situation again. They took her original design and really just refined it. Like, the base one from the from Radiant Dawn looks fine, and they just made it look better, honestly. The silhouette of this is uh, is very striking too. Like I can feel like the like an intimidating power from it. The use of lights along with her imposing expression, it's just very well done. I also gotta say, like, very interesting design choice to going with the feathers. I mean, I know that's more talking about the original design too. And I'm gonna give her bonus points for the attack and the uh, and the critical uh, arts that she has because she still has that very somber, very like imposing gaze. But when she does the critical, her eyes widen and it's like, oh my god, please don't kill me. Um, so yeah, how would you react if you if uh, you if someone told you that you had to go and actually try to kill this person? I would look at I would look at her and say, oh. That's gonna be a tall order. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it is. I remember fighting this thing at the, uh, at the end of Radiant Dawn, and I could never get past that chapter without losing someone. Comic Foil and I are currently doing a playthrough of it, and we're wondering if that's gonna be the same situation. I'm not looking forward to that fight. But now, moving on to number 10, Fallen Burkut. Um, continuing the trend of the, uh, Fallen Arts. So, um, a little bit of a spoiler alert for anyone who has not played Shadows of Valencia. This is the result of Burkut sacrificing Renea, his uh, wife-to-be, basically his girlfriend, for ultimate power, and this is the result. There's a lot overall going on with this with this pose, but it all comes together with Burkut's maniacal expression coupled with Rihanna's uh, blank one, which is all, which is kind of unnerving. But there's a lot going on in the fact that there's you got the swirling of the of the flames, the two different colors, you got the gorgeous detailing on the armor along with the flames. You have that eye in that in that staff. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, it's kind of funny too because I actually know where that eye is coming from. But yeah, it's actually kind of cool seeing like these two colors just kind of like clash together in the sort of spiral, um, in, in a sort of spiral composition. And yeah, I really, really like how, uh, uh, how they did this one. The addition of Rene like the flaming Renea is just really, really cool. Um, just do me a favor, babe. If I ever sacrifice you to a war god for ultimate power like this, pr do promptly break up with me. Oh, I will. Good. Good. Um, moving on to the next one, number nine. And this one took me by surprise. Pirate Cert. So, Cert is the main antagonist of book two, who I honestly thought had a really uninspired design. It's not bad or anything, but it's kind of just meh. And, they and then they turn him into a pirate, and he looks awesome. I actually really love the soft shading on this. Mm -hmm. um, it's really well done. Um, you got like the nice purple from the axe. You got the the orange in the background. Yeah, it is a little bit overtaken by his by his beard, but overall, it's a very well done piece. Uh huh. Uh, fun fact: that axe is an anchor. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> right though, like that's a, that's a lot of really cool details that like that come together to make him this like really really cool pirate king. His weapon is actually an anchor. You got the uh, you got the moose the moose spell like hat that he wears. The Anka ears, as you said when you saw freaking leg yarns design, <laughs> and they put him into a put it into a pirate hat, which is really really cool. Overall, I really really like this one. So uh, moving on to the next one, number eight is Fallen Ashnard. So. This is basically Ashnard uh, as a result of holding Leron's medallion. Spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't played Path of Radiance, but if you're watching this, you all probably already know all these details and everything. Straight up, this art makes him look like a monster. 
And the art in this one is, is really um, interesting too. You have a lot of very shiny details, but the way he's, but the way is he's framed with his cape, mm -hmm. um, even though it overtakes the picture itself, it has like a nice matte matteness to it, mm -hmm. which also draws you up to his face, which also has a matteness to it. That's actually really good. I, that's actually a really good point because there is a lot of really shining details, but everything kind of like the the way the uh, power the the way the energy smears are behind him, like it kind of just draws your face up, and it always ends on that freaking maniacal, like evil ass expression that he's got going on and it's actually really really cool the way they made his face look it actually kind of reminds me because they actually recently released another character named reeve who kind of has that same maniacal expression in his damaged art and like whenever they do that kind of thing in in these fire emblem arts I'm, I'm just like okay this looks awesome what would you do if you saw that face staring at you in the middle of the night probably run <laughs> yeah i think i you have a sensible answer on that one uh, coming up next, number seven is Resplendent Elincia. <laughs> in my opinion, the best of the Resplendent arts. Um, they basically put her in a Yosofar outfit, and yeah, I'm sorry, she looks adorable. I absolutely love this design. It's a very striking silhouette. You can very easily identify it. You get the nice use of colors, and overall, it's just a very cute pose. You get a, you get the nice little leg up. Mm -hmm. It, it's cute. I love it. It is a very cute one. And, uh, hey, in the damage dart, we get a nice butt shot. Bonus! I'm not gonna say, like, I'm not gonna say that about, like, a lot of arts and it's like, you know, oh, that's just a thing that, like, you know, makes them immediately good. I can think of a few that don't look good, even with that. But, um, I appreciate my fan art in Fire Emblem Heroes. It's basically waifu emblem at this point, let's be honest for a moment. Let, I'll, I'll put, I, I will ask this, though. Would you wear this? Yeah, I'd wear it. Mm-hmm. I think you'd look good in it. I, but that's, that's... I might be biased on that, I will admit. So, moving on to number six, we have Duma. So, similar situation with Kanegis and Ashura. They basically just took his base design and refined it. And I'm actually shocked because, like, at first I wasn't, like, entirely in love with this design. But the more you and I talked about it, the more I'm like, yeah, this is really, really good. Like, had you not told me anything about this design, you can definitely tell this is a very powerful person. Mm -hmm. Like, you can feel the power exuding from him. You can see it literally in the veins in his arms. You got the shining details. This feels like a man of power, and he's definitely suited for... This is an art suited for a God of War. Yeah, you're... I didn't even notice the veins in his arms, actually. You're, that's a really, really cool idea. Um, what really baffles me, though, is that they didn't go with this same art style for Mila. Um, Mila kind of falls into that trap of different art style in a uh, game where there's a very, very defined style with it. Which is a shame, because if they went with something like this, I think Mila will look a lot better. They did a really good job with Duma's art. Um, fun fact, um, remember Fallen Burkut? Uh, yeah, this is the guy he sacrificed Renea to. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, this is that god of war that uh, he sacrificed power for. He turned Burkut into that thing. So, moving on to the next one, number five is Uller. So, I'm gonna be honest with you, they're tickling my taste for the strong warrior archer women. Like, you guys know I love me some Lin. You guys know I love me some, you know, it just... Okay, I'm, ju I'm just gonna say, Uller looks awesome. She does. I actually really like the amount of detailing they, they took um, with her. And while some may think that her uh, overall image gets lost in her silhouette with her hair, I actually really like it personally, um, bec just because it gives you more to work with. Like, they really, like, used, took that advantage with her hair, but she still is very definable, like, with her, all her detailing. It kind of makes a pseudo background when you really think about it, because a lot of these are PNGs, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, they actually, like, took her hair and basically just made it a bit of a backdrop, and you can still very much find uh, what her overall like body actually looks like so that that is that is actually a really really brilliant design choice so good on you artists um would you ever grow your hair that long though nah short hair forever <laughs> all right moving on to the next one we have fallen arden at number four and yeah after kind of discussing it we kind of decided that this is probably the best of the fallen arts and again it, it kind of had to grow on me after a little while but yeah um, Harden, uh, instead of, like, going with the crazed look of Fallen Burkut or Fallen Ashenard or even Ike, 
they kind of made him look stern and stoic, and it works. It makes it all the more imposing, especially with the shape language they gave him. He has a very rectangular design, and it's, that makes him like very suitably large, and that he's almost taking up everything. He's taking up the entire space of this of this image. Yeah, you're right. Like that's actually kind of interesting because it's like you know rectangular designs you would not think would make for all that like dynamic like you know art or anything like that, but they make it work here. And he, I think he actually has less dark aura, like less like uh, power or, or, or energy smears going on with him, but it works for this guy. So, would you believe me if I told you that this guy used to be a good guy? <sighs> the best villains always fall from grace. Yeah, it's actually really sad too. I know the story of Harden, and he was a really, really cool dude. Like, but, oh man, I really, really feel bad for what happened to him. Like, they, they did, did a really good job with this art too. So, moving on to number three. Um, one I was not expecting to put on this list, but the more I thought about it, Kronia looks really good. Again... Kenegis, Ashura, and all, like, it, it's that kind of situation. They took her design from Fire Emblem Three Houses and just made it look a little bit better, but they didn't really change much. They nailed the design the first time around. Mm-hmm. Her, her silhouette is very striking at first glance. Um, and just coupled with the tendrils on, on her body or ribbons or whatnot, mm -hmm. um, you have the very nice like leather detailing with her, with her outfit, mm -hmm. um, coupled with like the, like, use of like, uh, peach or like this like nice peach color very well done i love this what i find really really cool too is that like a lot of people i can say like may have expected uh us to like pick the more provocative like designs because like fire emblem art the fire emblem heroes like development team obviously cares for cheesecake but this is one of those situations where the cheesecake makes a lot of sense it fits the character and just the way they design it is really really fantastic um, how would you react if I told you I wanted to cosplay this? I would like to see you try. <laughs> um, well, too bad I'm not gonna do it. Um, as much as I would like to try and pull something like this off, I don't think I could. I am sorry. But now, moving on to number two, Bridal Nyla. So, in my personal opinion, the best of the wedding alternates. Um, it's a situation of taking a badass character, putting them in something as, like, love as like love uh, associated as a wedding dress and it works yeah like so again there's something about putting strong women and like these nice soft uh clothing that it just like really like make makes it work and this is just my personal opinion but i absolutely adore the feathers on this wedding dress mm -hmm. mainly because i know what because I do know the backstory for that. <laughs> um, but it's a yeah. great addition to this wedding dress design. And you have the nice streaks of red in there, which really kind of like show her fierce nature. Ooh, that's a good call, yeah. I didn't even realize that, but yeah, the color the color contrasting on like some of the uh, some of the like ribbons that she has on her dress are a really, really cool detail. And yeah, for those of you who might be wondering, the wing that's on her hip is uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's a reference to Raphael, who is Nyla's husband, uh, come the events after Radiant Dawn, and really, it kind of just brings everything together. I also really, really like the fact that they took, uh, one of the, uh, took part of the headdress and made it her eye patch because of her cursed eye. Really, really cool detail. Would you wear a wedding dress to, uh, like this to our wedding? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Oh, man, that would be that would be really cool. You do have a wedding dress slated, and I'm excited to see that. Um, oh, yeah, j this, is your, this is our obligatory reminder to everyone that we're getting married. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so before we get to number one, I just want to mention a couple of, like, honorable mentions, just to, like, just to, so we can talk about it a little bit. First of all is Nephany. Again, same situation as a couple of the others on this list. They took a simp, they took her design wholesale from Fire Emblem uh, Path of Radiance and just refined it. Yeah, I really like this one too. It had a really nice simple pose, the good, nice, really good uh, pastel color palette. It's very simple, but it's, but it's also very brilliant. I agree. Um, another honorable mention is Hellbendy. Um, really good take on a Berserker design. I like this one too. Um, it's good. Um, unfortunately, the only thing hurting it was the lack of was uh, the lack of a defining silhouette. Yeah, that's true. He they kind he kind of he kind of has like this big bulking body, which kind of like doesn't make for a very identifiable like outline or anything like that. 
And lastly is Hell. Um, really, really cool idea for a Goddess of Death. And I like the fact that unlike most of the other heroes in Fire Emblem Heroes, she's sitting on a bone throne, and that's really, really cool. I almost really wanted to include this one, but unfortunately, with that bone throne comes a big disadvantage. Uh -huh. Her silhouette is absolutely lost. Yeah, it's the Hell Bindi problem again, because as much as like we would like to include Hell, like her design is really, really sick. It's that silhouette that's really the only thing that's hurting her. Otherwise, like I think the only defining thing we get are those like arms and the ribs that are like behind her. But other than that, really, really cool. And we only bring these up to just express how many good pieces are in Fire Emblem Heroes that we had a hard time narrowing it down to 15. That being said, number one was no contest, Brave Marianne. Um, oh my god, best Brave design in the game, best art in the game. And, uh, yeah, this is another situation with Erica. Like, people wanted to see Marianne in a really, really cool Brave outfit. And they nailed it. I absolutely love this design when I first saw it. You got the use of, it's just a nice, very nice S-curve silhouette. You got the use of the fabrics, very ornate jewelry and detailing. That makes you just want to go up from her feet to, to the detailing on her, on her thigh. You go at, your, at her waist, um, then you're drawn up to her neck. With the detailing on that and it's just absolutely it's very well done yeah like everything about this like is like comes together really well the very nice shade detailing the way the cape and the tassels kind of like create a really striking silhouette the pose on her like on her body is really 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 cool i love the expression they gave her i love the way they made her hair and um, this is more going into the fire emblem lord this is a reference to the outfit of the divine dancer in three houses but um, during the Forging Bonds event, it's actually expressed when she talks to Linhart that uh, the jewelry that she wears, the runic like band that she's got on her leg, as well as some of like the jewelry that she has on the bands of the outfit itself, are actually a reference to the Crest of the Beast. So she's kind of taking this dancer outfit and uh, kind of made it her own to honor her ancestors. And... Oh my lord, like, just knowing that detail just makes this all the better. Frankly, really, really cool design, really, really amazing representation. This is easily the best art in Fire Emblem Heroes, and I'm not sure if a lot of people will disagree with us. Oh hey, also, on her attack animation, she's got a really nice butt shot. Bonus! Would you wear this? Yeah, I would wear it. I would love to see you wear something like this. Frankly, I would like to see, like... I'm pretty sure this, like, is just perfect fodder for cosplayers anywhere who is a fan of Marianne from Three Houses. So, there you have it, everyone. The 15 best arts in Fire Emblem Heroes. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Any particular hero pieces that you think should have been on here? Well, that's what the comments are for. And, um, tune in next time as we take a look at what we think are the worst Fire Emblem Heroes arts. Until then, hope you guys had fun. I'm the Green Scorpion. And I'm Ignis Animations. See you next time. Bye!